Well, hey everybody, it's so great to be back with you again. I'm so thrilled to be with you uh, to present God's word. My name is Stephen Mannering. And uh, like I said, I'm just praying that God blesses you uh, with the word as he's given it to me today. And uh, before we start, I'm just gonna go to the Lord in prayer and just ask that he blesses you and blesses me as I present and uh, just allows the Holy Ghost to come and teach us. Uh, because without him, we can't do anything. So let's go into prayer first before we start. Lord God, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for this time to come before you. And we just ask that you would release the Holy Spirit to teach us. God, I just pray your anointing upon each and every single one of us, oh God. Everybody within the sound of my voice, God, I pray that you bless, that you uh, anoint them, that you increase their lives, oh God with joy, with peace, and your provision. God, you are awesome in all of your ways. And I just ask, Lord, that you would just allow this time uh, to be such a blessing to each one of us that we would draw closer to you, that uh, hopefully, God, that we would see just a little bit more of your love and your nature to us. And so, God, we just ask for your glory to fall upon each and every single person. Be with us now. Lead us and guide us. Holy Ghost, move upon our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, everybody, I'm so thankful and I'm thrilled to be with you again, as I've said, and uh, I believe that God has given to me a word to release. And uh, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to take your, your Bible and I want you to turn to Zechariah chapter 9. And I want you to start in verse number 9. And uh, sometimes you, you, you get these, these Old Testament verses, and, uh, and, and they just come alive. And I happened to be reading the Word one night, and this came alive to me. And I said, well, Lord, if you give me the opportunity, I would love to release your Word. And uh, so here we are today. So I'm thrilled to be able to do so. So Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humbled and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. And I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the horse of Jerusalem, and the bow of war will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations, and his dominion will be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. And verse number 11, And as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I have set your prisoners free from the water of this pit. Return to the stronghold of prisoners who have the hope. This very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you, for I will bend Judah as my bow, and I will fill the bow with Ephraim, and I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and I will make you like a warrior sword. Guys, I read these verses, and there is something that literally leaped off the page to me as I began to read this. The first thing that we want to see is in verse number nine, we're talking about rejoicing. We're talking about shouting. There is the king, and he's coming in, and he's riding on a donkey. It's just like the Word of God says happened in, as, as Jesus was on this earth. As Passover came, he walked in Jerusalem and he rode on the donkey. It's written right here. It was prophesied in the book of Zechariah before the coming of Jesus. And here we see it's the very nature of Jesus himself. And it says, Behold, your king is coming to you. Hallelujah. Guys, let, us, let me proclaim to you that Jesus Christ has come on earth for you and for me. He has come as our King. He's come as our Savior. He has come as our Master. He has come as the, the one that can redeem us from the waterless pit, the pit of hell. He is the one that loves us so much that he left his throne in glory, that he might come to earth to be a man, to die on a cross for us. Listen, that if you get nothing else 
out of the very fact of this message, let it be known that Jesus Christ has come to save you, to redeem you, because he loves you, and he wants you to be brought into the very kingdom of heaven. It's not a bunch of rules and regulations. It's a matter of the king left heaven to come down for you. If you get nothing else out of this message, let it be known that Jesus loves you, and Jesus wants to call you into his kingdom because he created you, he's got a plan for you, he's got a purpose for you, and don't let any devil in hell tell you otherwise, because the king is here for you and for me. Hallelujah. So I just want to keep on going here. So we've got this picture of Jesus riding on the donkey. And then right when we hit verse number 11, there's something that's so powerful when I began to read this. And it says... And I'll read it again. And as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant. Well, the covenant that was, that was made is the blood of the Lamb. You see, Jesus Christ is referred to the Lamb of God. There had to be a sacrifice for sin. The, all the evils, all of the sin, all the wrong, all the shame that we've done in this world, it had to be paid for because God Almighty is a holy God. And when you stand before God, you can't have sin in your life. You can't have just a little white lie. You can't have, well, it was just something that I did in the past, but I know I've got all these good things that I've done, and it kind of washes away all the bad stuff. It doesn't work like that. God is a just God. And unless you have a covenant that you can be washed in blood, that those sins will stay. And so it doesn't matter how many good things you've done in life. It doesn't matter how many times you've helped somebody carry out their groceries to their car. It doesn't matter how many times you've walked somebody across the street. It doesn't matter how many kind words that you've said. It doesn't matter how many um, dollars that you've given to a charity or even to a church for that matter. It doesn't matter because those good things don't wash out the sin that you would have done in the past. The only thing that can clean you is the blood of the Lamb of Calvary, and that is Jesus Christ. And so when he died, his blood was shed so that we can go to the very Father himself and say, you know what? I am not the same as I was. Jesus has washed me. Jesus has changed me, and he's made me into a new creation, and I've been born again. And because of Jesus, we have the opportunity to glorify God face to face without fear and knowing that we're going to spend all of eternity because of Jesus. So that's the awesome thing that's beginning to happen here. So the blood of the covenant that has been made is exactly as it says here. So I have set your prisoners free from the water of this pit because of the blood, because of the blood of the lamb that was spilled. I'll tell you, if there's nothing else that we can get excited about, then let's rejoice in the fact that the blood of the lamb was spilled for us so that we don't have to go to hell. We don't have to experience the torment of that place that is, that is supposed to be for the devil and all those demons. That's not what God had intended. God wants you and I to be set free. He wants us to walk in liberty. He wants us to become born again. He wants us to experience his love, his power, and his, his authority in such a greater degree than we can even imagine. His love is unfathomable. His love is amazing. And I'll tell you, there's if you got a second, I mean, just sit back and begin to praise God for his amazing love, for his amazing grace grace in your life. And sometimes all you just need to do is lift up your hands and just begin to magnify him and just take a moment to praise him for how awesome he is for just doing that for you and for me. It is just simply fabulous in so many ways. So we just want to, we just want to praise Jesus for that. And we just want to continue on. So now listen to this. It says, return to the stronghold, O prisoners who have the hope. Well, what's the stronghold? Well, the stronghold is a place of security. So that's what the Word of God is talking about. Well, where's the security? Well, the security is the fact that Jesus Christ is our fortress. Jesus Christ is the rock that we stand on. So when it talks about return to the stronghold, it says for those who have the hope. 
The hope is Jesus. So when you begin to look at this word, all you begin to see is Jesus uh, just simply um, lighting up all over these pages as you begin to read it. And sometimes you don't need... Um, you don't need all these great teachings to be able to help you read it. All you got to do is sit down with the Word and say, Holy Ghost, show me what you would have me to learn from your Word today. Let me see Jesus. And sometimes, and most times, you're going to find that Jesus will begin to pop off the pages left, right, and center. Because right from Genesis to the maps, it's all about the Lord. It's all about His goodness. It's all about His character. It's all about who Jesus is and His perfect plan that He has. And so when we begin to look at this, return to the stronghold, return to the place of Jesus. Return to that, that place where you have peace. Return to that place that you have a foundation. Some of you that are listening to me right now, you would have even walked away. You would have even done things your own way, but I'm calling to you, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm simply imploring you at this particular moment to return, return to the Master, return to the Lord Jesus Christ who loves you, who wants to be your stronghold, because there's a greater blessing that's going to happen here. So watch, return. Those who have the hope, this very day I am declaring that I will restore double to you. Can you imagine that? When we return to the Lord, when we return and rest in His presence, when we return and reside in the very foundation of who Jesus is, there is a blessing that is going to be poured out. Why? Because there is a covenant that was established by His blood. And sometimes all we need to do is take the very Word of God and begin to recite that and begin to respond to that and begin to have faith in that. Because let me tell you, as we begin to do those things, God begins to release His power, release His authority in our lives in such a manner that will simply amaze us. Hallelujah. It says, For I will bend Judah as my bow, and I will fill the bow with Ephraim. So watch this now. It says, For I will bend Judah as my bow. So this is the awesome part of what I, what I was reading. Judah is another name for praise. In this world today, they would love nothing more than to silence you. They would love nothing more than to take your voice away. They would love nothing more than to keep you quiet. Why? Because your voice has power. Your voice has purpose. Your voice can make a difference because the anointing of God will rest upon your praise and the power of God will be released. How do I know that? Because in the very beginning, God said, let us make man in our likeness. Let us make man in our image. So that's right in the very book of Genesis. When you begin to look at those very words, God was saying, we're going to make man like us. So what does that mean? Does that mean we're God? No, it doesn't mean that we're God. But what it does mean is that God made man to do the same things in this world that God did. Why? Because we're the shadow of who he is. So watch this. How in the world did God make this universe? He spoke it. And so we have to understand the process that God goes through because he is a God of pattern. Now, he's not a God of formula as far as our relationship goes. He's a father. So I, I want to clarify the two. God is a God of pattern and what he does, but he is not a formula. You can't do A, B, C, and then just have your, basically your checklist of, okay, I'm good with God now. That's not the way this works. It's a relationship. So it's uh, important to recognize that. He is a father. So when we go back to the beginning of Genesis, now we've got the very pattern. It comes from the mind of the father. It is spoken by the word of the Son and activated by the things of the Spirit, by the hand of the Spirit. You see, because we, we notice that in the beginning, the Spirit hovered over the waters of the world, but nothing happened. So there was something that was within the very mind of God, and then it was released when he said, let there be light. Well, who is saying that? Well, if we begin to go through the word, we understand that Jesus is the word. John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was 
God and the Word was with God. So we recognize that that is Jesus Christ. Then you go a little bit further on into Revelation and it actually says that Jesus is the Word. So we recognize that right from the very beginning to the very end that Jesus Christ is the one that speaks. So watch this. comes from the mind of the Father, spoken through Jesus Christ, activated by the hand of the Spirit of God. Because as soon as the Word was spoken, then it, it happened. The Spirit of God was activated to do things. So, if that is the case, when man is created on this earth, what he is supposed to do is do exactly what God had created him to be. You see, God is the creator. He created, and then that which he created, he wants them to be creative. All right, so that's the pattern that, that flows along. So if that is the case, if God has put his character into man on this earth, when the devil came into that Garden of Eden, what was Adam supposed to do? Adam was called by God to subdue the things in the garden. He was be fruitful and subdue. That's what he was called to do. When Satan came in the form of a serpent to deceive Eve, Adam sat back and said nothing. Adam was there, but yet when Satan came, he deceived Eve. What he should have done was said to that old devil, in the name of Jehovah, get out of here. You got no right, no business. And by his word, he would have had to have left. Why? Because the power of the Almighty God was put within Adam because he was created in his likeness. Now, because Jesus has come back, Jesus has restored all of that through Jesus to us. And so that when we who are living and moving and breathing in him begin to operate just as Jesus did in this world, we begin to release the same power, the same authority into our situations. And, and just the same way that Jesus did. Why? Because it comes to the mind of the Father, spoken by the word of Jesus, activated by the Holy Ghost. In the same manner, if we will come back and, and, and go back to the, to the very stronghold, if we will go back to that place of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if we will rest in him, if we will release the praise that he has put within us, that we can release that into this world. There is a power, there is an authority that is released that will shatter the works of the enemy. Why? Because it comes from heaven above. It's not by us, but it's through us. It is by the Master. It's by Jesus. The Word of God says, if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwell in you, oh, let me tell you something, then by that Spirit, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And because you have praise and the ability to, to, to worship God Almighty, you have the opportunity to be just like this bow. This is a weapon. And I'll tell you, as God begins to pour out his spirit upon you and you begin to bend like the bow. So what that is, is that's the beginning of praise that's happening here. And it says, and then I will fill the bow with Ephraim or I'll fill the bow with arrows. So what happens is Ephraim is the name of the son that came down from Joseph. Joseph came from, from Isaac. Isaac came from Jacob. All of that comes right down the line from praise and intercession. You see, Jacob was the one that was interceding. Jacob was the one whose name got turned into Israel. So there is a combination now of praise and worship that is aligning. And as you begin to combine those two, God loads you up like an almighty weapon from heaven. And so what he begins to do is he begins to pour out his spirit through you. You begin to bend like the bow. The arrow gets put in, the prayer and the intercession that you're beginning to lift up the God Almighty and he begins to pull it back. So when that begins to happen, there's a tension that begins to happen. Guess what? We live in a world with a lot of tension. But as we begin to release praise and worship to God Almighty, when we get into that place of intercession, there is a stretching, a pulling back, and there is a loading of what God Almighty wants to do in your life. And not only that, so it says, as you continue down here, and I will feel the 
bull with Ephraim, and I will stir up your sons, and I will make you like a warrior sword. Hallelujah. This warrior sword, this is just in reference to the king's sword. This is the one that sits upon his thigh. And I'll tell you, isn't it awesome that we can be joined with the Father, joined with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and used for his honor and his glory, that as you begin to get locked and loaded with praise and worship, praise and adoration, praise and intercession, when you go before God Almighty, what he does is he begins to pull that back and he's going to release it and what is he going to release he's going to release just like what this word of god says in verse number 12 this very day i am declaring that i will restore double to you so i believe that there is a time right now that we need to take this word and i'm speaking this prophetically to somebody even now that we would take the word of god and that by faith we would declare i am going to receive double why because i'm being pulled back and I'm being locked and loaded and I'm being filled with praise and adoration and nothing that that devil is going to do is going to stop it because why? Because God Almighty has made a covenant with me and I with him through his blood. The enemy is not going to tear you down but he is going to be defeated. Why? Because there is going to be something that is going to be released from heaven that is going to be shot like an arrow right across the enemy lines and you are going to be uh, restored with double. And I believe that if we will take the Word of God, if we will take the truths in the Word of God and apply that to our life, and if we by faith will grab hold of it, well, some might say, well, how do I do that? Well, guess what? Faith is this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of the Lord. So it's not something that you can just arbitrarily just hear off in the distance. No, no, no. Take the Word of God. Let the Holy Ghost see this within your heart. Look at these words. Meditate upon these words and begin to declare them in your life. Begin to declare them over your home. Begin to declare them over your marriage. Begin to declare them over your kids. Begin to declare them over your, your workplace. Begin to declare them wherever you go. That double is going to fall into your lap. Why? Because of the covenant and the blessing of God. See, covenant is something that's very important. Covenant is is an agreement that is between God Almighty and His people. It is not some willy-nilly thing that just happens. It is by uh, it is a sovereign uh, agreement that is brought together. And if we will just relax and let God do what He's got to do, then God will begin to bring into alignment all the things that we need. We don't have to strive. We don't have to struggle. Why? Because we're people of covenant. If we were to look back in the days of Abraham, him and Lot. Abraham made a covenant with God. And as God began to pour out the blessing upon Abraham, all those people around him began to be blessed because of what God was doing in his life. So much that, that Lot was right there, and both of them began to prosper. And so much so that uh, the servants began to bicker, and they began to argue with one another. Well, I'll tell you this. If it's me and I'm Lot or I'm Abraham, I'm firing the servants because they don't have a right to speak against the man of the promise. And if you are called by God and you have made a covenant with the Lord, you are one that walks with the promise. You are one that walks with the blessing. You are one that can walk in restoration. You are one that can walk in a, in a, a journey of victory and liberty and deliverance. You don't have to be held back, but by the word of God, as you begin to declare Declare that into your life and declare that into your, your family's life and declare that into all those that are around you. I believe and I wholly believe this, that if we by faith will take the word, not just by what we see, but by what we're hearing, what we see within this word of God, not what we're seeing around us, not the situation that might tear us down, not the situation that might seem desperate, but that we would recognize that with God, all things are possible, that we don't have to be be one that's downtrodden, that we don't have to be worried, that we don't have to be anxious, but that we can rest in God Almighty, knowing that He is looking after us, knowing that He loves us, knowing that by His blood, we have a covenant with Him, and that we go back to the stronghold, the very foundation of Jesus Christ, knowing that He is going to bring double to us, and that as we begin 
to be filled with praise and intercession that God is locking and loading us, that we are going to be used as weapons in his kingdom to tear down the strongholds of that devil. Because let me tell you something, he doesn't care about you. He hates you. He wants to rip you apart. The word of God says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his purpose. But Jesus comes to give life and life more abundantly. And so if you don't know this, Jesus, I'm calling out to you right now that you would just surrender your life to him, that you would be able to receive the double blessings that he has for you. Why? Because he wants to give them to you because he loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Come to him. Ask him to forgive you, save you, cleanse you, cause you to be born again so that you can walk into his kingdom. I'll tell you guys, I am thrilled. I'm excited with this word that the Lord dropped in my heart, and I pray it's been a blessing to you. I pray that you just take this word and you meditate upon it in your own time, and that you begin to just lift up a song of praise and adoration to him, that you would just exalt his name more than you ever have before. I pray that you just get filled up and stirred up that there is a blessing for you, no matter what's going on around you. And I just want to pray for you, even as we go, uh, that God would just do this. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you seal your word. God, the things that you have laid upon my heart, God, I pray that you would just allow that to impact lives. God, I pray for those that have been bound up, that you would set them free in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those that feel like anxiety is weighing them down. I pray for freedom and peace in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for any of those that are listening right now that need a healing touch. God, I speak your healing healing power in a double manner, oh God, over their lives. For those that need a financial blessing, God, I speak your, your power and your authority, oh God, into those situations. God, and I pray that as praise and worship is lifted up, that you would just release arrows, oh God, from heaven that would destroy the works of the enemy. That people, oh God, would walk into double blessing, oh God, because of your awesome mercy, your awesome love. God, we love you, we give you praise, we magnify you, and we thank you, oh God, for everything that you're going to do, that you're doing right now. God, you're amazing, and uh, God, we just can't say enough about you. Jesus, we bless you, we love you, we worship you, and we thank you for everything that you've done for us, what we see and even what we don't see. Lord, we thank you, we honor you, and we love you, and bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, I'm so thankful to be with you. Um, I just pray you've got a blessed day. I pray you have a blessed week. And uh, continue to seek the word. Continue to call out to him and receive that double blessing. Because it's time for the double blessing to be yours. In Jesus' name, amen.